In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a Hyper-V master disk image that can be reused for multiple Hyper-V machines in creating a lab or even in a production environment with the proper licensing. Let's go ahead and get started. So first of all, I'm in Hyper-V and I'm going to choose new virtual machine. From here, I'm going to name my virtual machine. I'm going to choose next and I'm going to give it a name that I can remember. I'm gonna call this Windows Server 2019 Standard for Standard Edition and then GUI because I'm gonna use the graphical user interface version and then Master Disk. From here, I'm gonna choose an alternate location besides the C programs Microsoft Windows uh, sorry, C program data Microsoft Windows Hyper-V location. I'm going to choose to store in a different location and browse. Now I tend to put these, I've got a little SSD as you can see here. I'm going to put that in there by selecting that folder. So it's going to create my folder structure on the root of E. Next I'll choose next. I'm going to make this a generation 2 virtual machine and I'm going to go ahead and give it 4096 megabytes or 4 gigs of RAM dedicated to this virtual machine. Now remember, I'm only going to use this virtual machine as a master disk, so I'm not going to be putting it into production. Next, I'm going to make sure that it can connect to the internet to get its updates via the virtual switch that I've created here. It's a physical team and notice I've put that this connects to internet. I'll choose next. Now from here, I need to create a virtual hard disk. I'm gonna go ahead and use 60 gigs of virtual hard disk and choose next. From there, I'm gonna choose my installation files. I'm gonna browse. These are on my root of C. I'm gonna just take you back to C. I've put all of my installation files on the root of C in a folder called software installation. Here is my server 2019 standard and data center and I'm gonna double click on that. That's the ISO file for this build. I'll choose next, and then finally, I'll choose finish. Now, prior to starting this up, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click on our master standard. Notice I've already created a data center. I'm gonna choose settings. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna increase the processor to a couple processors just so I get better performance as I build this machine. I'm gonna choose apply, okay, and then I'm gonna double click to instantiate and start up the virtual machine. I'll choose start, and when it comes up, just as if I had put in a disk, I'm gonna hit any key on the keyboard and it's gonna start the installation process. Now, I'm gonna make this video as short and sweet as I can, so I'm not gonna take you through all of the updates of the software but I will walk you through the process. So at this point, I'm just gonna choose next, install now. And it's gonna ask me for my software key. Now I'm gonna go ahead and pause this video while I put in my software key. After the key is checked, it'll take me to this screen here. I'm gonna go ahead and create a master disk with the desktop experience. So I'll choose that and choose next. At this point, I'll accept the licensing agreement. You're gonna to wanna to make sure you read that. And I'm gonna do custom install. There is my virtual hard disk that I'm gonna install it on, so I'll choose next. And then it'll take me to a screen where it starts copying the files getting files ready for installation, installing features, installing updates, and finishing update. I'm gonna pause till it gets done with this section. Once that completes, it'll go ahead and restart the machine, getting ready for the last part of the install. Once the server restarts, it's gonna ask me for a password. Now, this is a password that is temporary because of the fact that I'm gonna go ahead and sysprep this image so that it's ready to be used as multiple machines, thus removing all the specific security identifiers, etc. But I do have to put in a password. I'll hit finish and it'll bring me up to the login screen. 
At this point, I'll give it the Control-Alt-Delete and I'll log into the administrator account. Once into the administrative account, I'm gonna go ahead and change the size of the screen just so we can see it a little better. Now I've gone ahead and resized the display to 1920 by 1080 and I'm waiting for server manager to instantiate. Once that does, the next thing I'm gonna do is this process tends to be a little bit long. I'm gonna show you about Windows Administrator Center in another video. But at this point, what I'm gonna do is click on local server and I'm going to install all of the Windows updates until it tells me that I'm up to date. Now, this way, all of these updates will be installed in my master image. What I can then do is reinstantiate my master image, installing more recent updates, and then recess prep the image to use for future machines. So at this point, I'll go ahead and check for this, for updates, and I'm gonna pause between updates. Now, just so you're aware, you may have to, depending on how old your initial ISO image is, you may have to go through multiple iterations installing updates. I'm gonna go ahead and pause the video until I get a screen that says my machine is up to date. And as you'll see, I'm gonna to need to restart the computer a few times in between installing all the updates. Now that I've installed all of the updates, as you can see, it says I'm up to date. I've run this twice just to make sure I'm ready to move on to the next piece. Now, what I'm gonna do here is now that I've installed all those updates, I wanna go ahead and clean up the disk and make the C drive, which is my master disk, as small as it can be. So I'm gone in, I'm right clicking on the C drive, going to properties. Now, as you can see, it's got 15.1 gigs of space being used. However, I imagine some of those are the Windows Update files that have now been installed. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is choose Disk Cleanup and I'll pause while that runs. Once that ran, and as you can see, there is Windows Update Cleanup files that are taking up four gigabytes of space that are from the downloads and the installations of the updates that I've done. So I've found it best practice and doesn't seem to affect the machine, hasn't for years, for me to select to delete everything in here, especially when making a master disk. So I'll go ahead and choose everything to delete. It'll confirm and ask me if I want to delete the files, and then it'll go through the process of deleting those files. I'll go ahead and pause again while it completes this. Now, once that disk cleanup is finished, there is one more thing that we want to do before we shut down the machine and I'm gonna show you that real quick. So what we're going to do is go back into the disk properties, go to tools, and I'm gonna optimize. Now what I've found is that this will actually reduce the size of the disk. So as you can see, I'm optimizing the disk. Once that's complete, I'll go ahead and close that, and now I'm gonna shut down the machine. Now the reason I'm gonna shut down the machine is there's a process that I need to do within Hyper-V to compact the disk. So let me just show you here real quick before we exit that once we did all of that disk cleanup and everything else and we come back in, we're at 12.3 gigs for our disk size. So what I'm doing here doesn't have to be done, but it certainly helps with the size of the master disk. So I'll go ahead and pause while this shuts down. Now with the machine shut down, I'm gonna go ahead and just close this window. This is the one we're working on. I'm gonna go right click, I'm gonna go into settings, and I'm gonna to come to the hard drive. Now from there, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna inspect the hard drive real quick so that we can see that it's still showing, notice 15.44 gigs, but inside the operating system, it's showing much less. So what I'm gonna do at this point is I'm gonna choose edit. I'm gonna say next. I'm gonna compact this drive and choose next. And then I'll choose finish. Now at this point, it goes ahead and does a compaction on that file that makes up the VHDX. Now if we go ahead and do another inspection, 
We see that it's down a little bit. Now what's interesting is it really is smaller than this. So kind of interesting, but when you instantiate this, you'll see a much smaller drive when you use this master disk. So I'll go ahead and close that. I'm gonna go ahead and say okay to this. I'm gonna fire back up this machine and we'll run sysprep. So let me go ahead and pause while it starts back up. Now after we successfully log back into the system, what I'm gonna do is run sysprep. And I'm gonna show you how to navigate that through the file explorer. So at this point, I'm gonna to go to uh, PC, I'm gonna to go to the C drive, I'm gonna to go to Windows, I'm gonna navigate down to System32, and then navigate down to SysPrep. At this point, I'm gonna run SysPrep. Now, we wanna make sure that we choose to generalize this. We do wanna enter the out of box experience and we don't wanna reboot. What we wanna do is shut down. The only time we're gonna bring back up this machine is if we wanna go through this process again to install subsequent updates that have been done to Windows Server since we made this master disk. So one of the things that I tend to do is watch that uh, file property of the master disk file. And if it's a month out or two months out, and there's been a major revision, like a major update, I'll go ahead and update my master disk in this process. So once this gets done sysprepping, it's going to go ahead and shut down the machine. So as you can see, it's gone ahead and it's shutting down the machine. Now in the next video, we'll go through how to use that master disk to create additional virtual machines within Hyper-V. Take care.